Hi, this is Christelle Martinet, and I'm here with you, and it's almost, I guess it's the tail end of the 4th of August and the 5th, starting the 5th of August. So I'm going to call this the 5th of August reading. And um, I don't know quite um, well what the um, focus of this spread was going to be. Um, it's just um, a moment where there's a, a need to do a reading here. Um, we're past the full the new moon, and um, there's really such odd shifts occurring. Um, everyone I've been talking to, mostly all of the people I've been talking to, the clients that I have had, people who friends, relatives, um, there's quite everybody's saying, my God, these are crazy times, these are crazy times, these are crazy times. And it's in this spirit that I'm um, doing this reading, the 5th of August. Um, I hope that this will be of benefit to someone. I have here the Voodoo, um, New Orleans Voodoo Tarot. And then I have a new deck, a deck that's called the Silver Witchcraft Tarot beautiful deck. Let's see what they have to say to us. There are a lot of, um, well, there's, <laughs> you would think that every um it would seem the more your cards you pull out the more storyline there is but that's not the case um and and sometimes we think well the more major arcana that come out the more important the story is in part that is true but um it really is the con the, the the um the combination of the cards that um, come up and here I have three major arcana. And of course, there's a beginning of some sorts. There's definitely an ending here. Um, there's an there's a stable, there's a st stability here. I, I, I feel that there's great stability here. There's great stability. There is um, uh, transformation, but there's also a lot of celebration. Now... Um, when a time like this occurs, when there's um, a transformation, great transformation, uh, inevitably, and this is my experience, and so I'm giving it to you, this is my experience, there is a decision to make, and we have a Laplace card here, and that generally talks of a crossroads, a, a decision to make. But it also talks about a highly spiritual moment when the typically the... Um, the, the, the high priestess comes and she's not hiding anything in this deck. She's not saying that this is something you don't know, you're not supposed to know. No, she is uh, telling us that there are things that you do not see yet. You know them, but you don't see them yet. They're coming. But there's a give and take as well. And, um, and we have here the market card, the... Uh, Major Arcana 10, the market card, and it's quite um, touching. There's an emotional, there's a very emotional pull here. Um, there is every day ins and outs of life, uh, giving and taking and doing and coming and rituals and visiting and going and uh, giving your respects and things like that, and that is happening. But there's far more that's happening than meets the eye. And it seems that every one, every single card, every single player has their own story. And there's no really one story. It's very difficult for me as a reader today to come to you with um, some form of truth because it, it seems that everyone has their own truth. And, and, it's as if, you know, sometimes people write under my videos, 
it doesn't resonate for me, but you know, that's just the same. And it's not a matter of trying to resonate with everyone. Um, of course, the reader has their own agenda. I have eyes, and the only eyes that I have are those that I can see with. Therefore, it's inevitable, inevitable that I look at the cards and I see certain things. It's also inevitable that there are some times that I put out cards like I will be doing here with the Silver Witchcraft new tarot deck, which is just, it's um very demure, very discreet. And I imagine that the messages will also be the same. <clears throat> we have a lot of um, pain here there's a lot of pain but there's also a lot of emotions and a lot of emotions that are flowing and, and that is fine but um, it's almost as if we're battling through emotions that we cannot not acknowledge and um uh, as you can hear crystal Martinet martinette is <laughs> falling prey to that um there is however the three of wands here tre di bastoni the three of wands and the three of wands is is um taking stock you know we're taking stock of what has happened okay where where are where is our position in this moment where do we uh, figure in all of these cards and um and a very grounded king of pentacles here and when i see a king of pentacles in this spread in this moment it makes me as a reader say what the hell is this king of pentacles doing here he shouldn't be here now you know we should need something like a king of swords or a king of wands to just sweep through things but now we have this king of pentacles and he's very stately and he's very slow and he's going to get us through the motions and he's going to get us through what the business is that we have in, at hand. Now, there is also um, a number of things that that are left unsaid and I'm going to pull a few more cards of these. Page of Wands, Page of Pentacles. And the stars. Okay, so there is hope. There's, look at this page of wands. Page of wands. Page of pentacles. And the stars. Okay. It's asking us to take things with a grain of salt. We're here to understand that things are, be take, are, are to be taken with a grain of salt. Do not invest too much in the emotional um, side to your story. No, don't do that. Um, try, to be remain, try to remain aloof because when it comes down to the brass tacks and you are on the line, it's going to be a hard lesson to learn. This is what the cards are telling me. Now, I'm going to take the Vera Sibila, and this is austere. Christelle Martinet is giving you an austere look, an austere picture. Let's see if the Vera Sibila can pick our um, spirits up a bit because what I'm seeing, and this is three too many to, to think that they've fallen out for some reason, but um, let's see if I could um, give you some... All right, there's sadness here. Yeah, yeah, there's sadness. And there's sadness, um, the dispiacere. Dispiacere is the first card out, riunione and imeneo. Riunione, the meeting, and imeneo. Um, people's souls come together when there is a rite of passage when there is a passage, when there is a moment where things just pass. 
And um, it's the ritualistic nature of this that brings people together. And I would like to underscore the importance of the ritualistic nature of things and how that has such an important value for us in our culture today. Now, I'm going to take a few more cards over the King of Pentacles, who I just so denigrated before. And the King of Pentacles is there, and he is... Um, going to bring us a positive change with this Vecchia Signora. Um, something that we may not be able to see now with the military, but also there is the denari, the safe. There's something, he's there for a reason, the Page of Pentacles, and the Page of Pentacles there to give us some form of protection, like a daddy. We want a daddy. We want somebody to protect us, and, and, and that is the Page of Pentacles. But then, you know, in the, the anger of the moment, you feel like saying, damn you, daddy pentacles, you know, king of pentacles. Let's look down at the stars to see if there's something more. Because, you know, feeling the rebellion, um, the rebellious nature that I'm feeling, I'm really feeling rebellious here, and I can't understand why. There are the stars, and I would like to um, highlight that. Yeah, well, the stars are being bitchy, and the stars are telling us something we need to hear. The stars are telling us that there is a priest, a scientist out there, a single man. When, who knows, when they will come in, and then there is this negative side to the story, the female enemy. We are the female enemy, we are the male enemy, we are an enemy to ourselves in this moment. Now, if we want to um, recount a story of anger, of fear, of uh, moan, moan, we want to moan and bitch, you know, we can do that. But the energy of the 5th of August is a bit more than that. And to have a bit more than that, I'm going to... Uh, cast the runes to see if they can tell us something more. Every, t every time I see Gifu, I know that, that it is um, a prize. It's a prize. It is, it, it's a hug, you know? It's a hug. It's a hug that will give us much relief, but there's a lot of time before that comes to being. We have here, um, uh, things are Merck stave. Most of the things that I'm seeing are Merck stave. It is a matter of a moment of time, the 8th, the 5th of August, where we're going to have to mark time. This is the time we're putting in. I feel that I'm looking at a prisoner, a prisoner in prison, who has to mark time. And Marking time is his way or her way of journeying through what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Unbeknownst to us, but I would like to take a couple of more um, of these silver witchcraft um, cards. Uh, mix over the side as I speak to you. Tough day I've had today. The Eight of Wands. The Emperor. And Justice. I'll show you those. The Eight of Wands. The Emperor. They're both looking in the same direction. And Justice as if we are going through. And I've had this feeling for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks that there is a complete shift. There is such a strong shift. No matter how strong you are of a person, you'll feel it and you'll feel it in your gut. And um, the greater your level of spirituality and your dimension, the higher the level you are, the easier it will be for you to accept what is going on, but that will not change 
the pain that you'll feel because, you know, we're made of flesh and blood, we're third dimensional beings, we can think with our minds in fourth dimension, fifth dimension, we can do meditations, whatever we want, but the pain is felt, you know, and I guess this reading here is telling us that um, it takes time, it just takes time, it takes time for, um, for things to develop, and um, I, you know, every single time I pull I cast the runes, I cast the runes, and I get ing, ing thoughts. I see success, and ultimately we come out of it. Ultimately we come out of it. The motions, going through the motions, and doing your work and meditating is such a um, burdensome moment when you cannot see the light before, you know, at the end of the tunnel. And um, what I'm seeing is tear, here, tear, pointing to the female enemy as if it is a fickled finger of fate pointing. And, you know, I'm prompted to think that there are many people around you uh, out there uh, more than 60% who are making plans positively to move. I mean, a big, big, big move, a big move from one place to another place, from one place, from one side of India to the other side of India, from another, from India to another country. You know, there are big moves underway. And, um, uh, of course, that is accompanied by fear, lest we are made of iron and steel, and we are not. But there's a, a place, there's a place that points to the notion of fear as being the most wanted enemy, the most um, difficult enemy to combat. And, um, you know, sometimes fear has a name and you can call it a name, but sometimes fear is actually fear. You just want to sit and feel the pain because you want to remember it and it's like a memory you know you want to you, you want to remember um important things so you understand what that scar is like understand what that pain feels like so when you jump a level when you go beyond that fear and that pain it's time for us to rejoice and that's it and we start to rejoice. We're marking time now with Yera. We're marking time. And we need to face the music. Uros Merck's Day. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with me. It's not an ominous, uh, an ominous, an ominous message. It's not. It's a difficult moment in time for us all. Let's stay together. We'll make it. Bye-bye.